for helping us at the Amber Amber Institute. Institute. Thank you for helping us build it. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. It's the second time Jacqueline Johnson cried next to her son Kendrick's grave. The first time he was being lowered into the ground. This time he's being pulled out of it. Did you ever expect you'd have to exhume his body? No, I didn't expect to have to bury his body. In June, Kendrick's body was sent to Florida. The Johnsons hired Dr. Bill Anderson to conduct an independent second autopsy. In that autopsy, Anderson told the Johnsons he'd found evidence that Kendrick died as the result of a blow to the neck and not accidental asphyxia after slipping into a rolled gym mat at school, as investigators in Georgia had said. But what Dr. Anderson did not find shocked them. When we got the body uh, for the second autopsy, that organs, the heart, lungs, liver, etc., were not with the body. The brain? The brain. They were all absent. Every organ from the top of Kendrick's head to his pelvis, gone. And his family had no idea. We have been let down again. And when we buried Kendrick, we thought we was burying Kendrick, not half of Kendrick. Uh, I'm not sure at this point who did not return the organs to the body, but I know when we got the body, the, the organs were not there. So CNN contacted the two entities that had custody of Kendrick's body and access to his organs. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation, which conducted the first autopsy in January, and Harrington Funeral Home, which the Johnsons chose to embalm and prepare Kendrick's body for burial days later. A spokeswoman for the state tells CNN after its autopsy, the organs were placed in Johnson's body, the body was closed, then the body was released to the funeral home. State investigators say it's their normal practice, but what happened after his body arrived at the funeral home was anything but normal. What was in the place of the organs? Newspaper. Newspaper. Dr. Anderson showed me the pictures of Kendrick's body he'd taken during the second autopsy. It's a Black Friday ad, J.C. Penney ad. Yes. Stuff in that newspaper in like he was a garbage can inside his body. It's unbelievable. I'd imagine that that's a different kind of pain. Yeah. Why do you think that there would be newspaper stuffed in, in your child? I never heard of that before. Never. Neither had the founder of a national embalming academy contacted by CNN who said it's not consistent with the standards of care in the industry. Nor had the president of the National Association of Medical Examiners who told CNN he's never heard of this practice. Why would the funeral home discard his organs and stuff them with newspaper? The question is, why did he tell us? So what exactly did the Harrington Funeral Home do with Kendrick's organs? And why was he stuffed with old newspaper? We went to their office to find out, but their response to us? No comment. However, in a letter to the Johnson's attorney, Harrington Funeral Home owner Antonio Harrington denies he received Kendrick's organs. He writes in part, his internal organs were destroyed through natural process and henceforth were discarded before the body was sent back to Valdosta. It's another disappointing answer for parents determined to know what happened to their son before and now after his death. And they admit they're struggling. Unbearable just about. Only thing that give you, wakes you up in the morning is just to keep pushing. A potential murder mystery 2,000 miles away leaves an Atlanta family with a lot of heartbreaking questions. Tonight, a Mabel and Muller searches for answers about her son's death, including why internal organs were missing from his body. Fox 5's George Franco joining us from Control A with tonight's top story. George. Deidre and Russ, 24-year-old Ryan Singleton left Metro Atlanta in early July to chase his dream of becoming an actor or model in Hollywood. Instead of dreams coming true, his mother is now living a nightmare, wondering about her son whose body turned up near one of the most inhospitable places on earth, Death Valley, California. He went to Las Vegas during a weekend visit um, and got missing in 
Baker, California, on the way back. Iris Flowers tell me joggers discovered the body of her son, 24-year-old Ryan Singleton, September 21st in the desert near Baker, California. That's between Las Vegas and Los Angeles. She says she'll never forget the call from police. I said, there were no organs. He said, ma'am, there were no eyes, there was no heart, there was no lungs, there was no liver. There were no kidneys. The San Bernardino County Coroner's Office says right now there is no cause of death. The body was severely decomposed. Animals might have been involved. The case has been sent to the Specialized Case Division because it deserves more attention than we can give it. Ms. Flower says she was told the body was mostly intact. I don't know of an animal that comes to a body and just pick out certain parts of the body. I don't think this was animal activity at all. Ms. Flower says Ryan left Atlanta in early July. July, traveled to L.A., then in a rented car, drove to New Mexico, Arizona, and Las Vegas. She says his car was found in the Death Valley Desert a few miles from Baker. He was last seen at a gas station in Baker in July, his body discovered a month later. There's a surveillance picture of him being in the AMPM store, and he was found a mile and a half or so behind the store. Ms. Flowers says the coroner's office has released her son's remains. Now she wants to conduct an independent investigation to find out why he's dead. The hardest part for me is not knowing, not getting any answers, um, and trying to get him home so we can bury him. Ms. Flowers says a friend of her son will bring his remains back later this week. The San Bernardino County Coroner's Office in California did not give us a timeline for when their investigation will conclude. Live tonight in Control A, I'm George Franco, Fox 5 News. Well, it's a a huge roundup in New Jersey this morning. And tonight, nearly four dozen people, including three city mayors and two state legislators, are under arrest. Charges here include bribery, money laundering, and no one has seen anything quite like this case. The story tonight from our justice correspondent, Pete Williams. Federal agents started the roundup at 6 a.m., arresting mayors and state legislators in New Jersey and rabbis in a parallel case in New York, 44 in all. New Jersey's corruption problem is one of the worst, if not the worst, in the nation. Corruption is not only pervasive, it, become, it has become ingrained in New Jersey's political culture. Hello, Mayor. Three mayors were charged with taking bribes. Hoboken's Peter Camerano, Dennis Elwell of Secaucus, and Anthony Suarez of Ridgefield, along with Leona Beldini, the deputy mayor of Jersey City. FBI agents were listening in as officials met in diners and parking lots with an undercover informant posing as a real estate developer looking for favors. It appears that whenever the informant waved around money, hands reached out to grab it. Some $650,000 in cash paid to city and state officials and go-betweens. Court documents say Hoboken's mayor was recorded telling the informant, you're going to be treated like a friend. And when the informant described himself to Mariano Vega, a Jersey City official, as being in good hands, Vega replied, like all state. For these defendants, corruption was a way of life. They existed in an ethics-free zone. Jonathan Deanst of New York's WNBC-TV, who broke the story, says federal agents made a surprising discovery. The FBI says it also stumbled upon a Brooklyn man who is offering to broker the sale of human kidneys. They say for $160,000, he would find donors in Israel who needed the money and then fool U.S. hospitals that the donor and recipient were related. They say he'd been doing this for more than 10 years. And prosecutors say rabbis at synagogues in New Jersey and New York helped the informant launder over $3 million by sending it to contacts in Israel who returned cash. The FBI says some New Jersey officials appeared suspicious of the informant, but never wary enough to pass up the cash. Pete Williams, NBC News at the Justice Department. The Honorable David Kilgar, former Canadian Secretary of State for the Asia-Pacific region, arrived in Australia last week. In Melbourne on Thursday, Mr. Kilgar is speaking at a pre-release private screening of the film Free China, The Courage to Believe. This film, in which Mr. Kilgar is interviewed, tells the story of two Falun Gong practitioners who survived the horrors of China's labour camps, including torture and human organ trafficking. He is calling on governments, lawyers, doctors and the man in the street to take action against the illegal organ harvesting that is happening in China. 
Comparing it to the Holocaust, Mr. Kilger regards it as a parallel situation of systematic destruction of human beings. Killing one human being so that another one can have an organ from that person is, is just wrong. And in the 21st century, we call it a new crime against humanity, which it certainly is. And With the focus on this illegal organ trafficking, which amounts to murder, positive changes are starting to happen in some countries. And, uh, Israel is the most uh, dramatic, where they, they were actually paying for people to go to China. The insurance companies were paying for them to, their organs that they were buying and the operations and the, all the expenses related. And then when, uh, when uh, Dr. Lavi discovered this was happening, uh, he brought in a new bill, and all parties support, and they've stopped it completely now. No, they put some of the organ brokers in jail, and I gather nobody goes from Israel now to China for organs. So it would be nice that nobody was going from Australia to, to China for organs either. And it wouldn't take very much will among the parliamentarians in this country, I think, to, to achieve that. David Shoebridge, member of the New South Wales Legislative Assembly, has produced a comprehensive consultation paper proposing new legislation to make it a criminal act equivalent to manslaughter to buy trafficked organs. I'm hoping that the, the federal or the state governments will pass laws which will stop anybody from going to China to, uh, given the circumstances in which these organs are being uh, pillaged from people often prisoners of conscience, Falun Gong practitioners who have been convicted of no crime at all. Mr Kilger is co-author of Bloody Harvest with human rights lawyer David Natus, which documents their extensive research into the state-sponsored killing of more than 45,000 healthy Falun Gong practitioners for the sale of their body parts. While in Australia, Mr Kilger will be speaking in Parliament House, Canberra, to expose illegal organ trafficking and advise on preventative measures. NTD News, Melbourne, Australia. No one except the Israeli hospital has taken any of our patients. I'm just amazed. I'm just amazed at what's here. This is, this is like another world compared to the other hospital. Imaging department. I mean, imaging. My God, they have machines here. They have actual operating rooms, and it's just amazing. What's the machine? Uh, the respiratory machine. It's a ventilator? Ventilator and monitor. Ventilate, monitor, suction, and uh, oxygen. I mean, they, they don't have this at the little hospital that I came from. So the Israelis have set up a field hospital. Have the Americans, has the American government set up a field hospital? Currently not yet. The Israelis came from the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. It's a frustrating thing that I really can't explain. Yeah, I said it's something that makes you almost embarrassed to be an American. The situation is beyond desperate at this point. The disaster was the quake, but this is the disaster that's following in its wake. And it's, these patients were so thankful to have lived through the quake, and now they're slowly dying in these hospitals. We're desperate. Now, I've been texting back and forth with the Eastman for this American hospital that's supposed to be up. They've been saying for days that it would be up any time. And the last text I have from him says, we hope to have the hospital on the road Soon. In other words, they hope to have the hospital up and operating soon. Kira?